In section 2.5, we are going to be graphing absolute value functions. And I spelled value in this particular way as a reminder that when we are finished graphing any absolute value function, it should take on a V-shape. Now, it may be an upside-down V-shape, but uh, just keep that in mind. Think of the V in value and let that be a reminder to you that anytime you graph an absolute value function like the one that we're about to graph, it should produce either an upright V or an upside down V. Okay, so let me give you a method that um, I'm interested in you using, and uh, this is really the only method that we're going to use. The book teaches uh, two or three different ways, including uh, graphing by using a graphing calculator. Uh, I'm just going to show you one method and that's the only one that that we are going to use. And so uh, let's just jump right in and uh, here's our first example. My, my absolute value graph or function is y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 1. Okay, so first of all, very first step, very important first step is to find the vertex. And the vertex is, if you're looking at my little V shape here, the vertex is that point at the, if it's an upright V, it's the very bottom point. Or if it's an upside down V, it's the very top point of the V. Um, you might be interested to know that the word vertex comes from an old word, I believe it's Latin word, that means turning point. And so you can think of it as this line maybe moving in this direction, and then it gets to this point, and then it changes and goes in this direction. So the vertex is that tip of the V that we need to identify first. And I've given you a formula uh, that will help you identify the vertex. So notice how I've labeled the parts of this function. The part inside the absolute value walls looks very familiar. It, it really takes on the form of a slope intercept, y equals mx plus b. So we're used to seeing the slope as that number in front of x, and this other number, constant, that's part of our function, is the what we're used to seeing as b, or the y-intercept. This is a little new. Uh, this number out here that we're calling c, will stand alone outside of the absolute value walls. And so for this particular function, c is going to be 0. So if there is no number out here by itself, outside of the walls of absolute value, then it's understood that c is just 0. So using my little formula here, it says to do the opposite of, OK, the opposite of b, which is in this case negative 1, over m, which in this case is 2. And then the y-coordinate of the vertex will be this number c, which we've already identified as 0. Well, this really, if you're reading it in words, it says the opposite of negative 1 half, which, of course, is just positive 1 half. And then the y-coordinate, of course, is still 0. So we found the vertex, all right? And so on our graph paper, uh, let's just go ahead and plot this point 1 half 0. That's, that's really where we begin this graph. So here I am at the origin, and uh, 1 half 0 means to go right 1 half and then stop. Don't go anywhere up or down. So there's the point 1 half 0. Okay, so the other part of this graph, it's really a two-part process. You find the vertex, which I've just shown you how to do, and then use the slope. Now remember, going back to our original function, the slope is whatever that number in front of x happens to be. And in this case, the slope is 2. But you got to keep this in mind. Remember that we're ultimately going to be graphing a V shape, whether that's upright or upside down. So if the slope is 2, 
then I am going to count up to right one, up to right one, but I've also got to consider because it's absolute value, I'm going to go from this vertex up to left one, up to left one. Because if I didn't do both the positive and the negative slope, obviously I couldn't make the V shape. So it's two parts. Find the vertex, which we do, well, I showed you how to do, and then look at the number in front of X, that slope number, and count it, as I've worded here, both a positive and a negative from the vertex. So let me show you how that works. So here I am at the vertex. My slope again shows two. So I'm going to go up to right one, up to right one. And then I'm going to go back to the vertex. I'm going to do the same thing with a negative two slope, up to left one, up to left one. OK, and that's going to be our graph of this absolute value function. So let me just get some uh, lines here. These are just, really, they're like rays because um, we're only going to have a line going in one direction, going this way upward, and then another line going in this direction. So that is the graph of this absolute value function, y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, and uh, in general, anytime we do an absolute value function, I just want you to include five points. All right, just keep that in mind. I'm looking for five points, and the vertex counts as one point. And then on the both sides of the vertex, you should end up with two points on both sides. So total of five, just like this. All right, let's try another one. Uh, this would be my second example. So uh, here I am with this absolute value function. I went ahead and labeled the M, the B, and the C numbers. So first thing we need to do is locate the vertex. Well, I'll just rehearse this little formula with you. It's the opposite of B over M. That's the, that will be the x coordinate of the vertex. And then the number that's called C will be the y of the vertex. So if we plug into our little formula, B is 6, M is 3, C is negative 2. Of course, we can simplify negative 6 over 3 as negative 2 to go along with the Y coordinate of negative 2. So this is my vertex. So let's begin by plotting the point negative 2, negative 2. OK, now from this vertex, I noticed that uh, something else you can keep in mind, if there is no minus sign in front of the absolute value, then you're always going to have a regular upright V. The thing that turns your V upside down is when you have a minus sign in front of the absolute value. Not inside, but in the very front. So just to show you another example, um, if we were graphing something like this. Uh, this would indicate that when I'm done, I should have an upside down V okay, going down from the vertex. But I don't have the, uh, the negative sign in front of absolute value for this function the way it was given to me originally. So I know that I'm going to be going upward from the vertex. And exactly how wide or skinny the V shape is going to be, it really depends on this number. So I'm going to count the slope of 3, up 3, right 1. And I'm going to do that one more time, up 3, right 1. And remember, in order to get the V shape, I'm going to have to do the negative of that slope, up 3, left 1, up 3, left 1. And now we're ready to sketch, and this is going to be our V-shape. So it's really a pretty easy process. It's really a two-part process. Find the vertex, and from the vertex, count the slope as both a positive and a negative. OK, let's try this one. Oh, we notice that this one has the minus sign in front of the absolute value. So. When I've located the vertex, I should be having an upside-down V from the vertex, two lines going downward. 
But first, uh, let's find out where that vertex is. So once again, just so you'll get used to seeing it, opposite of B over M, that'll be the X, and then C will be the Y coordinate. All right, so it's going to be opposite of M is 2, B is 5. And out here, once again, there is no number outside the walls of absolute value, so C is understood to be 0. So this is just another way of saying negative 2 and a half. So for graphing purposes, it may make more sense to show that as the mixed number, negative 2 and a half. Okay, so here's negative 2, and then here's another half, 0. So that's where my vertex is located. And remember, uh, the negative sign in front means that I should be going downward. This should be an upside down V. And I'm going to count a slope of positive 2 and negative 2 from this point. So let's just go down to right 1. That's the negative. And I'm also going to do the positive down to left 1. Remember, negative over negative is positive down to left 1. All right. And that represents our V shape. Okay, we're doing great. So, ooh, this one looks a little more complicated. Uh, the previous problems uh, did not have a number besides the negative 1. That's really like saying negative 1 in front of the absolute value. And these basically just had positive 1 in front of the absolute value. So those were uh, pretty easy to handle. But what about when we have something other than 1? in front of the absolute value, like this, 1 half. Well, we're still going to find the vertex the same way we always have. The vertex is still going to be found by doing the opposite of B over M, comma, C. This is still, let me do it different colors, the number in front of X is still M, this number is still B, and this number is still called C. All right, so let's see if we can find the vertex. B is 2. It's the opposite of 2 over 1 half. And then C, out here by itself, outside the walls of absolute value, is negative 2. Well, remember, the, it seems like we run into this situation quite a bit. Uh, let me just come over here and write it out. This says negative 2, or we'll just... We'll come back and add the negative on later. 2 divided by 1 half is the same thing as inverse and multiply 2 times 2. So 2 divided by 1 half is really 4. But this is going to make it become negative 4. And then, of course, negative 2 will be the y-coordinate. Okay, so we found the vertex. Notice this one half in front of the absolute value had no effect on how I find the vertex. It does not affect anything as far as my formula for finding the vertex. So I'm going to come over here and plot negative 4, negative 2. And with this being a positive number in front of the absolute value, I know that I'm going to end up with a V shape that opens upward. The question now becomes, what is the slope that I'm going to use to get the rest of my V? How far am I going to go up and right, up and left from the vertex to make the rest of the V? Well, this is where you have to be careful because this problem with this being different than 1 makes this a little bit different in far, as far as finding, uh, determining how much I count upward and right, because I now have to think about putting these two together with multiplication. Okay, I just made brackets around the number outside absolute value and then this number in front of x inside absolute value, and I need to multiply those together. And hopefully you can see that 1 half times 1 half is equal to 1 fourth. This is really, in effect, what I'm going to use as rise over run. 
both positive and negative. So be on the lookout for a number, a factor in front of the absolute value. And when you see a number like this, you will need to multiply these together. So to get the rest of my V shape, I'm going to go up one, right four. And one more time, up one, right four. And I'm also going to do the negative of that, up one, left four. Up one, left four. All right. And I'm just going to draw my V shape. And that's it. That's my graph. So I just wanted you to be on the lookout for uh, these factors in front of absolute value. That's pretty much it. That's, those are the only examples uh, that I have for your notes. And so, uh, again, I, I just want you to follow this procedure, even though the book may give instructions as to other methods. Uh, don't worry about other methods. Just use this particular method of finding the vertex and then using m as rise over run, positive and negative, or in this case, the multiplication of m times this factor, that will be your rise over run, both positive and negative, from the vertex. So I hope this helps. Uh, you're just going to be doing a lot of practice uh, with this method, uh, graphing the v-shape that results from absolute value functions.